Hey guys, today we have another Q&A video for you. Let's get into it. Will the monsters have their own items or will they pull their board from the hero's card pool, like in the update video? So it's gonna be a mixture of both actually. We've been talking a lot about the way we wanna design monsters lately. And for some of them, we want to give them like a special item and maybe like that's the reward they drop when you kill them. Uh, we're also looking into making some monster only neutral cards, things that like common enemies would use. So claws, fangs, like things that animals might have for our animal enemies, just as an example. You know, I'm, I'm not saying these things are all gonna be in, um, but we are testing them right now and thinking about them right now. And you know, it's really important to us that monsters are as fun and as cool uh, as they can be. So. Um, there's a lot of ways of going about designing them. We can work backwards from hero cards we already have. There's just a, a million options. That's what's cool with the system we have. It's really flexible and um, we're gonna try a mix of both. Pulling from hero pools and making dedicated items for monsters and just seeing how it, how it shakes out and how it feels. Any plans on making the atmosphere get darker as the day progresses and gets closer to the final node? Uh, yep, that was um, in the works uh, since like the beginning of last year but the board's changed a lot since then. At some point, we definitely want that because I think it gives more visual clarity that you're like moving forward in a day without needing to look over at the clock all the time. It'll just be kind of obvious that like it's getting darker towards the end of the day. Um, so I, I, I only see upside from that and we're definitely gonna try to make it work, but I don't know if it'll be ready by launch, hopefully. Will the game be playable with clicks only, no dragging, asking for accessibility reasons? Uh, so right now you could do everything with clicking except repositioning your items and selling them. So I think, at least the way we're planning it now, you will need to do some dragging, but we haven't settled on the mobile inputs yet, so maybe that changes. Um, but I, I think it's pretty tough for us to get to take dragging out of our game. You just kind of need it for moving items like in between one another and things like that. Polly says, will the pool of available items and spells that the vendors choose from be available in client? Rain adds mentioned trying to minimize third party websites for info, maybe that would be a bridge too far. So we do plan on having a collection tab that basically shows you the special versions of cards that you own, um, just so you know, you're like filling up a, a Pokedex <laughs> along the way basically. It's possible in that collection manager you'll be able to filter and then show all the cards you don't own. So then, you know, it's effectively uh, a collection of cards for that class that you could sort through. Yeah, we'll aim for that. And if not, we'll we'll put all the cards on, on our website. Can you give us a hint about a mechanic of a class we haven't seen yet? So all of our class mechanics are gonna be pretty aligned with the theme of the character. Uh, you know, Mac is gonna do potion stuff and you're gonna feel like an alchemist playing him and you know, buying potions, making potions. Jewels, you're gonna be doing, you know, a lot of cooking, a lot of feeding, a lot of eating. Stealth flies, and Dooley builds a pretty cool engine and tries to get stronger and stronger. That sounds kind of vague, but there really shouldn't be too many surprises when it comes to class mechanics. We want the class to, to play the way that it looks like it should play. Because when you make that call to, to buy a class, to buy a hero. That's mostly what you're thinking about, right? You're like imagining a play style and we want to live up to that expectation. Are there any unique mechanics you want to bring to the game, either for the classes we haven't seen yet or something down the line? Absolutely, there's gonna be lots of unique mechanics, but I don't want to like sit here and rattle off a bunch of them randomly, like verbally, because um, then they're like hard to imagine. I want to give you guys visual aids and all that, but trust me when I say we're gonna have a lot of unique mechanics. The classes are gonna feel very different from one another and it's not just the, the heroes and the card sets themselves are going to have unique mechanics. It's, it's the merchants, it's the monsters. Uh, we really just have a flexible game that we can do a lot of cool stuff with. So there will definitely be some unique mechanics. Are there any current plans for how tournaments would work? What about a ranked ladder? More specifically, can you use an MMR system with the Bazaar's global matchmaking system or do you pair against players of certain MMRs but only by days and wins? Yeah, so Sage, it's a really interesting question. It's a pretty long topic. It might be worth making a dedicated update video just on this. Um, but I can give you some of my instincts right now, though I can't say for certain this is how it'll end up. I don't think that skill-based matchmaking 
is a good thing for most games. People do it anyway. For the same reason, they usually do stuff because they can. But I don't think it makes the play experience better. It's way better, not just for content creators and streamers, but I think for the average player to have non-skill based matchmaking. It creates its own like progression system because you feel yourself getting better, you start noticing the kinds of players you can defeat. I think that the more RNG that a game has, the more okay it is to match players of different ranks against one another. Like in Hearthstone, you know, the best player in the world, me, could theoretically lose um, to anybody at any time. Um, not that it's ever happened. And you want you want that. I don't know. You want the, the underdog to win sometimes. So I think our game's conducive for that. I think it's going to be exciting to run into like a high ranked player uh, on occasion, even if you're, you know, like mid rank. It'll be fun to queue into streamers. And as a streamer, as a content creator, there will be fun to, uh, you know, crush everyone. So um, I just think it, it, it's, it's win win all around. We could put in a bunch of complicated systems that try to drag everybody towards a 50% win rate, but the costs don't seem worth it for the benefit at this point. As far as like specifics, how tournaments would work, how ranked ladder is going to work, uh, you know, there will be tournaments, there will be a ranked ladder. We really want to get tournaments into the client at some point, but that probably won't be a feature that's ready on launch, that'll probably come after. Um, ranked ladder we do need on launch, that'll be kind of our flagship game mode, or at least the one that I, I'll be playing myself quite a bit. Um, and we've talked through a lot of different rank play systems, but yeah, keep an eye out for an update video where we go into it more in depth. And uh, just know that we'll have one. Antonio says, what made a Q2 or even Q3 release date unfeasible? Uh, we just kept developing the game, kept making it better, and just felt like we could release a much better game by pushing it a little. So. Um, you know, I, I've tried my best to never give dates, um, but then I caved. I had moments of weakness, and I mentioned quarters at some point. Now people are all over me about that. The game will be done when it's done, and whatever we release into the world is going to be incredible. Do we have any events in mind during the day that resonate with the class the player's playing? Uh, we definitely plan on having some unique events for each hero, and that's part of the value proposition of buying a new hero um, and getting a different play style. You're gonna run into events and characters and just unique situations that only that character can, so that'll definitely be a thing. Is magic a power that exists in the bizarre universe? If so, in what ways will magic and mages be incorporated into the bizarre game? The bazaar has properties that you know, some people would call magical, but you know whether that's just really high tech that nobody understands or magic, um, can't really say. But yeah, we're gonna have some wizards and stuff. We're just gonna sprinkle it in. You know, it's not gonna be everywhere. Who is replacing Ben in the development team? Uh, so it's not quite a one-to-one -one replacement, but we we did bring in a design director. Um, a little over a month ago, and we've been hiring quite a bit. We have a lot of new designers that have joined the team, really veteran people from really successful games. And it's just been awesome to see, you know, the team blow up and, and us really starting to get confidence in, in doing something of this scope. Um, I mean, at this point, there's over 40 people working on the project between art contractors, designers, project leads, producers, just everyone. Um, so it's a big team and it, it's stronger than ever and we have some some even more exciting hires lined up in the future too so feels like a real thing now we're turning into a real company will all the characters have the same number of cards in their card set mostly yeah it'll you know it might be like plus or minus five cards or something but yeah I'll, I'll, almost like within a few cards of each other can we get a release date nope what part of the game are you most proud of uh, I, I just think of it as like a collective thing. It's uh, I don't really separate parts out. I mean, I think the art is amazing. I think the music is amazing. I think the gameplay is different and innovative, and I'm really proud of some of the design choices we made, um, especially for like asynchronous play um, and things like that. How common do you want item crossovers to be? Acquiring items from other characters. 
Uh, so that's a great question. And we've been experimenting with it by introducing all the other heroes as a merchant with a very low drop rate. Right now it's like, they're like the lowest drop rate event in the game. Um, and they're really exciting when they come up and it's really fun to do that. But I wanna make sure we don't go full Hearthstone with it where every class is playing with every other class's cards. Because if you, if you take it too far, you basically undo all class identity. Like your heroes no longer feel different from one another because they're all using each other's stuff. We're gonna do some of it because it's fun, it's exciting, um, but we're not gonna like oversaturate um, the experience with, uh, you know, getting cards from a million different classes. It's just also too much info to take in. Like, I, <laughs> I wanna throw some numbers out just so you guys get an idea of the scope. Uh, of the game, because there's just a lot more stuff in this than any other auto battler or like Slay the Spire type of game, uh, roguelike type of game. You know, in other games you have like one card set, you know, let's say it's like a hundred units and you're drafting from that, like for Battlegrounds or TFT and I'm ballparking, I don't know the exact number, sometimes it's 80, sometimes it's 120, but say like a hundred cards, right, in a, in a set. And everybody drafts from that same hundred card set. But in our game, we have a set for each class, right? You know, or like close to 100 cards for each class. When you have to like be aware of like 800 cards or whatever, it's just a lot. So we don't want to put a, a huge like burden of knowledge on the player either. So that's kind of another reason to just make it like a rare special thing when you can buy from another class. Um, it also just like makes it more exciting the less you do it uh, when it does come up. So yeah, I don't know. That's kind of our take on it. Honestly, the low drop rates feel pretty good right now. When and where can I get that Tempo Games shirt? Oh man, we should do merch sometime. Um, no, no plans for selling those just yet, but it might change soon. Um, I'll look into it. I'll see what we're doing with merch. I'm just glad you guys are excited about it. Do you plan to make comics or graphic novels based on the Bazaar? So with the Bazaar, our big goal is to make it a transmedia IP, a transmedia property. What that means is, instead of the video game, like just being a video game, we really wanna have, you know, an animated series and we wanna tell part of our story on social media and we wanna start doing like shorts. And it's basically about building up the world of the bazaar yeah, on lots of different platforms, not just within the game client itself. So comics and novels definitely on our list. Um, it's part of our transmedia strategy. I mean, the great thing about comics and novels is that out of all the different types of, of transmedia you can do, um, it's, it's probably the easiest and, and least expensive to do. Um, so yeah, I think it would be exciting to, to get comic books out into the world. What's your favorite piece of music in the bazaar? Uh, so I'm a big fan of Dooley's playlist. It's pretty sweet. It's got like electronic ambient sounds. How often are you looking to push updates after the release? Uh, so we have some early versions of a live ops schedule that basically like our content release schedule and we're iterating on it. It's still pretty early stage. So um, I can't quite commit to, you know, telling you there's going to be this much content this many days, but we want to update it a lot. It's a live service game. We we'll always want to be changing it. There should always be something new to find when you log into the bazaar. Are there thoughts of creating a 2v2 or eight man lobbies game mode? Uh, we're definitely thinking about it, but it's too early to say exactly what modes we want. It's important to us that you can play with your friends though. What progress and unlocks can free to play players grind towards? So the main thing is gonna be new heroes. Every hero has its own completely unique set of cards and you wanna own all of them if you wanna play with the different card sets. So um, yeah, just getting new heroes, probably the main thing that free to play players are gonna be wanting to do. Um, but there's a lot of cosmetic unlocks as well. Why should I play this and not Hearthstone? Ooh, how much time do you have? Okay, PR stuff aside, uh, the game is just way less predatory in the way that it monetizes. This is the most free-to-play friendly card game, uh, PvP card game that there is. You can't solve the game with an external meta. Like, Hearthstone, it gets really homogenized as a play experience. Because the meta gets solved, everybody puts the best decks on the internet, and then everybody copies them. And then you're just playing against the same four decks over and over. But the Bazaar is different every time. So the Bazaar is more replayable, every game is more different. With Hearthstone, you're committed for 10 to 15 minutes just to play a game. You can't walk away in the middle or else you lose. The Bazaar is asynchronous playable, so it's just a smaller time commitment. You can walk away at any time without losing progress or without losing your game. And, I mean, there's not any PvP card game that can tout that except us. Uh, it's better looking, it's more fun, 
Their CEO is incredibly good looking. Do you plan on doing daily challenges? For example, have nine weapons to help people try different builds? Uh, definitely, it's gonna be an achievement system. It's gonna encourage you to try different stuff. And I'm, I'm sure some sort of daily uh, challenges are gonna be a part of that. As always, thank you guys for sending in your questions and keep them coming. Send them over to the Bizarre Discord, on Reddit, here in YouTube comments, Instagram, pretty much wherever. Our community team is going to go through and cherry pick some of the best questions for the next Q&A update video. So if you haven't joined the Discord yet, make sure you do that. If you haven't followed us on, on Reddit, on Twitter, on Instagram, make sure you follow all those channels. Let's play the Bizarre on everything, almost everything. Anyway, we'll see you guys back here on another Friday for another update video of the Bizarre.